We now bring you Prove All Things with Dathan Bodie. Good morning. This is your host, Dathan Bodie. Welcome to another segment of the program, Prove All Things. I serve as the minister for the Church of Christ, which meets in Rockingham, North Carolina. We are located across the street from Godfather's Pizza and diagonally from Family Dollar. Our purpose on this program, friends, is to encourage individuals to return to the Bible, return to God's blessed word. Why is that important? Well, it's important because Jesus has commanded it. Out of the gospel of John, the gospel of John chapter, chapter 17, here, here's the word of Jesus. Here is Jesus, John chapter 17, citing from verse 20. Jesus said, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their words. Jesus' prayer is that he's not praying for the apostles alone, but he's praying for the individuals who obey the apostle. And that statement refers to us. He is praying for those who obey the words of the apostles. And 21, that they all may be one. And that is Jesus' wish, friends. Jesus this is what Jesus wants. He prayed that we all shall be one. Everyone who pronounced the name of Jesus Christ, he desired that they should be one. 21 said that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. We see that oneness is to convince the world that that God had sent Jesus in 22 and that and the glory which thou givest me I have given them that they may be one even as we are one and that's the purpose of Christianity friends the purpose is that for all Christians to be one in Christ this is Jesus's desire we have to respect the words of Jesus if we love him we ought to obey him. According to John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, it is conditional. And so our Lord and Savior is saying that all believers, all who pronounce the name of Jesus ought to be one. But you know, friends, it's a, it's a, it's a sad thing on, on today because those who are in Christendom, that is those who who put themselves under the banner of Christianity, they do not believe the same thing. Now it must this it must be a travesty. It must it must be a mockery of the words of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who came down from heaven's glory to save us from our sins, his desire is that we ought to be one. We ought to be one in Christ Jesus. But someone come uh, came up with a fancy idea that you know we can be uh, we can be divided, we can be we can we can be a, a, a multiple group of people and still still go to heaven. Well, Jesus is saying the opposite. Jesus said they may be one, and friends, one means one. It is regrettable on this morning that the Baptist Church does not preach the same thing as a Presbyterian. The Presbyterian does not preach the same thing as the Methodist. The Methodist doesn't preach the same thing as the Seventh-day Adventist. The Seventh-day Adventist doesn't preach the same thing as the Episcopal Church. The Episcopal Church doesn't preach the same thing as the Jehovah Witnesses. The Jehovah Witnesses don't preach the same thing as the Pentecostal, as the Church of God, if you may. You see, friends, something is wrong. And what's wrong is not wrong with the Word of God, but it's wrong with these institutions that man have created to violate God's word and still believe that we can go to heaven. Jesus said that they may be one. And friends, I am, I am foolish enough to believe what Jesus says. What Jesus says. 
Joshua. Here's what Joshua said. Joshua said in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, Joshua said, and if, and if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord. Now, why, why would it be evil, friends, to serve the Lord? It is evil because of our hidden agenda. It is evil because our motive. You see, all of these fractions came about because of personal ambition. All of these fractions came together, or came about. One of the primary reasons, friends, or, or the results of these fractions is, is pride. Pride. Man want to be, man want to elevate himself. Man want to be recognized. So he comes up with his own way of teaching. But Joshua said to the Holy Spirit, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, you have to make a decision. Choose this day whom you will serve. We have to choose, we have to look in God's word or look at the doctrines and manuals of man and make a conscientious decision to say <clears throat> who we will serve. We have to make a decision. So as we look in our religious world today, let us make a decision on who we will serve. If we're going to be Baptists, let us be Baptists. If we're going to be Presbyterian, let us be Presbyterian. But mind you, the Baptist or the Presbyterian is consistent with the teaching of God's word. So choose you this day. Are you going to serve God or are you going to be associated with denominational teachings and principles of man? You see, friends, friends, I want to agitate your thoughts. I want to agitate your minds. I want you to go back to what the Bible says. What I am holding in my hand is the Holy Word of God. And I stand by what I'm holding in my hand. As a Christian, I can only say what the Word of God says. Jesus said that if you love me, keep my commandments. What is his commandment? Well, one of his commandments is that that you that they may be one. Now, you can be mad at me, or you can be mad at Jesus. You see? And to be mad at me is to be mad at Jesus. Because all I'm doing, I'm just a vehicle. I'm just reading the word of God. Joshua said, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom he will serve. Whether the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land he dwell. But Joshua said, but as for me and my house, we will serve God. Joshua said that we will follow the principles and we will follow the teachings of God. Joshua has drawn, drawn the line in the sand. He said, now, if you want to follow the man-made religion, you go ahead. But as far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And Joshua is referring to the principles which Moses had received from God on the Mount Sinai. Today, we are to make the same decisions. The same decision, rather, we ought to say, well, hey, we going to serve the Lord. We will, t we will take all of the denominational teaching, we will put it in a dung hole. We will get rid of it and teach only the principle of Testament Christianity. And that is the purpose why we're here on this morning. We want minds to go back to the words of God. A, a favorite scripture that I, I, I use constantly on this program it comes out of John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 48. Here's what our Lord and Savior Jesus said. He said, he that rejected me. Well, you, 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 have, those who, you have those who appear to serve our Lord. And the rejection, the rejection comes by disobeying his commandments. In 48 it says, he that rejected me and received not my words had one that judged him. That means, the words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him on the last day. It is simple, friends. It is simple. Let's just go back to the Bible. So that when we stand before God on Judgment Day, we can be justified because we have obeyed what, what has been written in the Word of God. It is that simple. It is that simple, friends. 
Let's abandon all the teachings, all of the philosophies, the manuals, the creeds of man, and turn our minds to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We would like to invite you to be a part of our worship here in Rockingham, North Carolina. Our address is 1013 Wild Cherry Avenue, Rockingham, North Carolina, 28379. You can check us out on our website. Our address is www.rockinghamchurchofchrist.com. Dot com, or you can you can like us on Facebook. You can access our Facebook from our main website. Our time of worship: Sunday morning Bible class starts at 10 a.m. Sunday morning worship service 11 a.m. Sunday evening worship service at 6 p.m. and Wednesday evening Bible studies at 7 p.m. You are invited to come out and to be with us. On this morning, we're going to continue our studies in concerning apostleship. Concerning apostleship. As I mentioned, there are individuals in the religious community who are perpetrating, who are claiming to be apostles, and they are not and they are not. I want to give you an analogy. If someone were to to knock on your door and you open your door and they identify themselves as Officer Brown and in their hand they have a roll up piece of paper and they say that I, I have a warrant to search your home for illegal contraband and and the individual proceed to walk into your house and start searching your house but never showed you the paper now I would think as a reasonable person you would demand to see this warrant you would you would demand to see this paper now the officer all he did was just identify himself as John Brown and as he showed you what he had, but he has showed you the piece of paper roll up in his hand and said that I have a warrant to a warrant to to search this home for illegal contraband. Now, friends, being as reasonable as you are, you would demand to see it. The officer didn't show it to you, but he proceeded to go ahead and search your house, and you protest, and you protest. Officer, curiosity was satisfied, and he left. I would think that perhaps you would call the local police station and say that you had a Officer Brown who just left your home who was violating, violating your protection under the law. Now, the station said, well, we don't have a John Brown, an officer by that name. Ah, uh, we don't have an officer by that name. Now, apparently, you have been duped by an individual who enter your house perpetrating as an officer claiming that he has a warrant in his hand and proceed to search your home and left what am I trying to say here friends I am trying to say that we this is the same way we are violated in our in our religion we are violated the same way in our religion you see, individuals would knock on the doors of your heart and they would say that God sent them and they would call themselves by names that, that, that are foreign to the word of God. They will call themselves by names that is foreign to Christianity and they say that they have the right to enter the domain of your heart and search it and to give you something that God did not give them. In their hand, they're holding these creeds. Now, friends, what they should be holding is the word of God. 
They should be holding the holy word of God. And as that office is supposed to open that warrant so that you may see it and read, for you, read it for yourself, well, likewise, when individuals knock on the, on the doors of your heart, you have the right to say, I want to see book, chapter, and verse. I want to see the authority that you have to do what you do. Friends, we are, we are reasonable people. And our response should be the same way. It should be, I want to see book, chapter, and verse concerning the things that you are teaching. You know, we do it, we, we, we do it readily, readily in the secular world. We, we do it. We want, to, we want the information. We want, to, we want information. We want individuals to prove what they're saying. And this is what this program is all about. We want proof. And the only proof that can, can be provided is through God's word. If it's not in God's word, call me, whatever you may. But if it's not in God's word, I am not going to follow it. Is that, is that, a, is that reasonable? Of course it is. And my point on this morning, friends, is that denominationalism has no biblical grounds. Because Jesus said that they may be one. They may be one in belief. They may be one in name. They may be one in principle. They may be one in action. And they may be one in attitude. But we do not see it. So we have Officer Brown or an officer perpetrating being, being called officer, but he called himself Officer Brown, and he is presenting a warrant, but you did not allow him to open it. You didn't ask him to open it. Friends, look. Ask the Baptist Church to open their warrant. Ask the Catholic Church to open their warrant, and you would see that it is not consistent with the Word of God. Now, referring back to, to apostleship, Likewise, those who call themselves apostles, friends, these individuals are deceiving you. As we define apostles on last week, the, 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 the definition of an apostle is one who was sent by Jesus. Not just sent by Jesus, but they, they, they were sent because their names were called. Their names were called. It's recorded in the scriptures. We also cover the qualification of apostles. Friends, the qualification of an apostle is found in Acts chapter 1, verses 20, 21, and 22. The, the, the qualification of an apostle is found in the book of Acts chapter 1, verses 20, 21, and 22. And the qualification is that one must have been with Jesus from the beginning of his ministry, that is from the baptism of John, all the way up to the time he was taken up to heaven. Now, friends, 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 individuals are making a mockery of this scripture because they still resort to calling themselves, man today and woman, they still resort to calling themselves apostles. But the Holy Bible tells us that the qualification of an apostle is for one who had seen, uh, one who had been with Jesus, beginning from the, from, from the baptism of John, all the way up to the time Jesus was taken up. Ask them to open the warrant. Ask them, friends, to open the warrant. Because apparently, they are not who they say they are. To be an apostle one must have seen Jesus with his naked eyes. To be an apostle is to be living in the first century when Jesus was alive. And now, I would guess that for someone who called himself an apostle, they must be mighty old. Now, on this morning, we want to look at the, briefly want to look at the, the characteristics of an apostle. It's not just good to call oneself an apostle, but there are there 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 are necessary characteristics associated with an apostle. Now, there are certain characteristics. It, it, it's a behavior that is that is peculiar 
to a particular person or a group of people. So the apostles, they had their peculiar characteristics. And we can start to see these characteristics out of Mark chapter 16, the gospel of Mark chapter 16, starting from 15. And he said unto them, who, who, who is the them? Well, it's the apostles. In verse 14, it says he was talking to the 11 apostles. So 16, 15, it says, And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, listen to this, friends, the characteristics of an apostle. Verse 17, And these signs shall follow them. These signs shall follow the apostles. And these signs shall follow them. Here are the signs that are uniquely character, uh, uh, characteristic to the apostles. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it should not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, the, 12, the, the 11 apostles, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. 20. And they, the apostles, went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them, the eleven, and confirming the, 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 the word with signs following. Amen. So the, 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 the characteristics of the apostles were that the apostle had this unique ability. And this ability was for the confirmation of the word. Now, if the apostles had this unique ability, and these, were, and these were necessary for the confirmation of the word, well, friends, we already have the word. The apostles had already served their time, served their purpose, served their office, and what they left behind for us is the word of God. So those who claim to be an apostle today, friends, what it is that they are confirming? They cannot be confirming the word because we already have New Testament Christianity. What is it? The Bible says that the purpose of these things were for the confirmation of the word. And the apostles, they give us the word, friends. We have the word. So those who call themselves apostles today, my question is, what, what is it that you are confirming? Here are some other characteristics about the apostles. If you turn with me to Acts chapter 6, verse 6, that's the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6, verse 6. Here is something that is unique to apostleship, the office of apostleship. In Acts chapter 6, in verse 6, the apostles uh, asked the, the church to select seven men to, to deal with, with a benevolent uh, uh, situation in the church. And here is what 6 says. 6-6 six, six says, whom they set before the apostles, the church set these men before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Now, the church set these seven men before, be, be, before the apostles. The apostles prayed for these men, and then the apostles laid their hands on these men. Why did the apostles lay their hands on these men? Why? The apostle laid their hand on the, the hands on these men, so that these men may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, unique characteristic. The apostles had the ability to lay their hands on individuals for the purpose of them receiving the Holy Ghost. Now, when these individuals received the Holy Ghost, they were able to speak in, in, in tongues. They were able to prophesy. They were able to heal whatever the gift was that the apostles laid upon them. But, it, but listen, friends, it is only the apostles who had the authority to lay their hands on individuals so that they may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Question. Those who perpetrate themselves to be an apostles, to, apostles today, the question is, well, it's not even a question. I'm going to make a statement. You do not have the authority, nor do you have the power nor do you have the Spirit of God to put it in someone else at a in a miraculous way. Well, what do you say about that? Because it was only the apostles who had the, who had the, the power 
to lay their hands on another individuals individual let me let's go to acts chapter 8 turn with me turn with me to acts chapter 8 friends acts chapter 8 verse 14 through 17 it reads now when the apostles which were at jerusalem heard that samaria had received the word of god they sent unto them peter and john peter and john being apostles who when they were come down prayed for them okay like the apostles did with the seven men in acts chapter 7 first they prayed for them and when they were come down they prayed for them that they might receive the holy ghost for as yet he had he had he was fallen upon none of them only they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus christ 17 then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. That's what the scripture said is a unique characteristic of the whole of the apostles. They had the authority or the power or the spirit that they could lay their hands on an individual and, and the individuals receive spiritual gifts. Friends, those who call themselves apostles, they would have the right, as given by Jesus, to do this. Let's ask, let's ask individuals to open the warren. Open the warren. Because if the warren is open, individuals would be put to shame because the warrant didn't give them the authority to do what they do friends can we simply can we simply go back to the bible can we simply open up our hearts and allow the Bible to speak to our hearts? Can we question individuals and institutions that have made a mockery out of God's word? Now Joshua said, we have to make a decision. Joshua said, make a decision whom you will choose. If you're going to choose to worship the gods of the Amorites or the gods that your father served on the other side, of the river you do that but he said but for me and my house we will serve the Lord the Lord in other words we would go by the principles of the Lord well what did our Lord say to us uh, Jesus said if you love me keep my commandments so it goes to say that those who didn't uphold the law of Moses Joshua said look then go after the foreign gods go after the gods that your father serve but for me and my house, we go and buy the law of Moses. Now, Jesus said, on the New, for, in reference to New Testament Christianity, he said, well, if you love me, do what I say. If you love me, honor what I say. Demonstrate your love by obedience to my word. And it is only the word, friends, that we have. It is only the word that we have, the word of God. This is all we have. This is all all we have so friends those those who are calling themselves apostles today quite frankly they are liars quite frankly because the characteristic of an apostle is to have the ability to lay one hands on another individual and that individual who has been touched he would receive gifts of the holy ghost and the gift of the holy ghost it is evident by for example speaking in tongues raising the dead doing other miraculous things prophesying and if that's not happening friends then i just simply submit to you through god's word and it's it's a lie and so i encourage you to just use the authority of god's word listen to what god's word says and if it's not in god's word just simply reject it no hard feelings just reject it 
and follow what God says. Because Jesus said that he that rejected me and received not my word has one that judge it, judge it him, the word that I've spoken. He said the same, the same shall judge you. So it is his words that will judge us in the last day. I pray that our hearts on this morning was open to receive what God has to say, not what I say, but what God says. Receive it, obey it, and to do it. This is Dathan Bodie, the minister of the Church of Christ, which meets in Rockingham, North Carolina, with Prove All Things. I encourage you to go back, to look over the scriptures we, we uh, went over on this morning, and you examine the word for yourself. Don't take my word for it. You examine for yourself. I pray that you would, you would be diligent and you would be determined to find the truth of God's word. May God bless you. Until next time, Dathan Bodie with the Rockingham Church of Christ. You've been listening to Prove All Things with Dathan Bodie. Joins again next Sunday morning at 7 a.m.